All right, hi, Paul Slack is Good News Planet. Wings Over Haiti soars again, presenting the fourth annual Hamptons Artists for Haiti Benefit Bash. It's tomorrow, Saturday, August 7th, uh, 5 uh, p.m. to 8 p.m. East Hampton Airport. Very cool stuff. We have Saul Paul here. Saul Paul, top man. Haitian, great musician, be the change. All right, why? Why should we be the change? Hey, we all share the same marble floating in the sky. Uh, my take on Be The Change is the fact is we all stay on the same planet. Keyword there is fact. The fact is we all stay on the same planet. The truth is we each live in our own world. So I encourage people to be the change in the world they live in. That's a fancy way of saying there's a self-responsibility there. So people don't like it, but for those that want to be inspired, they realize like, I might not be able to change what's happening in in, in Haiti or Kentucky, uh, but where I am in Austin, Texas, on my block, I can make that change. And if I want to scale from there, I can do that too. So I'm encouraging everyone to be the change in the world they live in. I love it. I love it that you're speaking our good news, positive, life-affirming language. You know, it's all within us. That's it. Om, we're all brothers and sisters. And here's the photo from the moon. You see no boundaries, no borders. This is the blue mm -hmm. marble from NASA, and we're all in it together. We love that kind of thought process. So tell me a little bit about your background, and uh, did you were you born in Haiti and grew up there? Or no. Where? Actually, the event is for an organization, uh, you know, Artists for Haiti. The, you can find out more at the website, Wings Over Haiti. Uh, myself, I am not Haitian and have not been to Haiti. My organization... Change Water, I'm a fan, uh, my organization, well, this is my company, Change Water. We support Wings Over Haiti. So we're excited to be a part of the great work that they're doing. Four years ago, they built a school for children in Haiti. Um, people supporting this year's event uh, will help us build uh, uh, add-ons to the school and be able to serve more students. Which now, my back. That? Which school was that? What's the name of the school? You know? Uh, well, the name of the organization is Wings Over Haiti. Ah, because I have them in one of my shows, I think. Uh, I know I have a Haitian school where people here uh, help to, uh, it probably is the same school. Um, it's all good. It's wonderful. I've done a bunch of stories about Haiti and uh, good things happening there and people trying to help the best they can. Of course, we know it's not right now a uh, stable scenario because of... No, not with the assassination. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but you were asking uh, about my background. The reason why, my why, the reason why I do what I do, uh, I can relate to some of the orphans um, that, that are in Haiti, some of the students that get served by the school. Myself, I was an orphan. My mom died when I was three. My dad, I've never met in my life. He was gone before I was born. I was in foster care. Uh, but there was an amazing woman that came into my life, adopted me, uh, invested in me, and created a foundation for me to succeed. And it worked. I was able to transition, overcome those circumstances I just mentioned, in addition to incarceration as a young person, and ultimately got out of prison, went to the prestigious University of Texas at Austin, and graduated with a 4.0. After I graduated from college uh, with honors, I knew I had an inherent responsibility to serve uh, at-risk youth. And for the last decade plus, that's specifically what I've done. I've done it through my platform of music. Uh, and I recognize the more my, my star shines, the more I get to focus light on the great work of others. So you know, last year I got nominated for a Grammy and a bunch of other cool things. And I just take all that energy and uh, I put it in to change water which is premium electrolyte water, and we donate 50% of our profits to nonprofits that are doing work for young people. Oh, I love it. So tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about your, your music background. Uh, how did you get into that, and what were you nominated for? Best Children's Album. My oh. heart has been for children. Yeah, my heart has been for children uh, ever since I, I became an anomaly. Big fancy word means that I'm a, like an outlying statistic. Most people don't get the results that I've been uh, allowed to have, uh, that I've been able to create for myself through my faith and through my hard work. And I just recognize that it's not enough for me to be okay. I wanna change systems and change cultures and communities so that everyone has the opportunity to succeed and be okay if they so choose to. My musical background is I grew up listening to hip hop uh, 
And, you know, I mean, I just consumed it. I lived it. I loved it. Um, there's good and bad. There's both sides to that. Like it influenced me negatively. So when I went to prison, I realized that like the, the music I consumed had influenced me. The movies that I watched influenced me. My neighborhood I grew up in influenced me. And so um, when I discovered I had this musical gift, when I was invited to the studio years ago by some friends, it's like something just clicked. I realized like, whoa, this is my purpose. So I invested myself in songwriting and then that led to production. That led to the classical acoustic guitar, which is my instrument of choice. So then I mixed all of that and I use a loop pedal as well, which allows me to do vocal percussion and create these live improv elements. And I mix it all together. And so I'm part rapper, part singer, songwriter, creating my own unique style. Um, and young people love what I do and they gravitate toward me. So each year, pre-COVID, I've had the opportunity to impact over 100,000 youth uh, through live events. And so I continue to do that, impact families. Because uh, I think good music, good songwriting touches everyone. You know, I, I did Woodstock. Uh, uh, actually, the 20th anniversary of Woodstock with a guy named Richie Havens. Richie mm. Havens started Woodstock, uh, the original, singing Freedom, Freedom, Freedom. Uh, he was at a bed sty in here in Brooklyn, New mm -hmm. York. So it was Biggie. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry? No, I said, so it was Biggie. That was one of my uh, my favorite right. MCs was Christopher Wallace. He was from Bed Stuyvesant. Right, 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 right. And, and, and I remember Richie saying to me in Times Square, which is where I did the 20th anniversary, and I have a movie coming out uh, called Woodstock Forever, Peace, Love, and Hope. What, you, what you're all about mm -hmm. is what we're all about. And so uh, this week, even. And uh, huh. um, Richie was saying with regard to the rap music is that at that time, and now this is like a long time ago, 1989, he was saying that, you know, that music gives an opportunity for young people actually to share some of their frustrations and anger. You know, it's a it's a medium of, of, of you know, poetry, poetry. Yeah, emotion, definitely poetry. Yes. Right. And if it's understood in that manner, um, then it can be put into a good perspective uh, for you and for children. Tell me about this album. So what, what made it so you think uh, uh, well uh, loved? Yeah, well, my most recent album, well, I wish my most recent, but I dropped two albums in the pandemic. Uh, one of them, uh, the most recent one is called It's Okay to Be Different. It's available everywhere. Anybody can go listen. I encourage you, if you're listening to this, to go check that out. But uh, the cornerstone, the key album was Be the Change. As it says behind me, I created this entire movement based off of that album. It was well received because <clears throat> the music is good. That like one, the songwriting is good. The music production is great. The theme "Be the Change" really resonated, uh, and I saw it as an opportunity to uh, to do something unique. It was I don't I don't even keep up. I don't know if it was my eighth or ninth album, but. Um, I did something that I had never done before and I featured other artists on my album. Usually I'm the one that's invited. I'll help someone produce a song or do a, a guest verse or something. But, you know, it was in the middle of the pandemic. George Floyd had just been murdered. There was so much um, uh, distance. There was so much hate, so much negativity that just didn't sit well with me. And then I heard so many people have all these ideas about what could be and what should be. Uh, and I'm not an idea guy, I'm an action guy. And so instead of just listening to all these random ideas um, from people that were new to it, whereas I take pride in, you know, over a decade, just be, like, being on the front line, doing the work. And I was like, let me show people what diversity uh, and inclusion looks like. And so instead of like people waiting to invite a person of color like myself, I'm African-American, a black person, black male, heterosexual black male, um, right, and so I'm, I'm the bad guy, physically fit, whatever, right, and it was like, oh, let's, maybe we can invite them into our space. I invited a lot of non-Black artists into my space, and we collaborated and created songs. So the album features some amazing artists, uh, two-time Grammy Award-winning artist, Lucy Kalantari, Grammy-nominated artist, uh, Lori Enriquez, also Grammy-nominated, Alphabet Rockers, uh, Latin Grammy Award winner, Uno Dos Tres Andres. Uh, and so I brought in these different folks and then we created music together. I produced it, but I made sure that people weren't just a part of what I was doing. It was like, hey, would you like to collaborate? And collectively, we created unique things. And I think that's what uh, really resonated with people. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything you're saying makes a lot of good sense. You're a smart man. I can tell that. You're a, a caring man. You know, be the change also was a comment, I think, of a guy named Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi I heard him. I think I heard him. He uh, he said uh, he he said be the change you want to you know you want the world to be you be the change it's all up to you know the the you know somebody says if you point a finger there's a uh, five finger four fingers still uh, facing you so uh, the that is if we could all and even Michael Jackson said that you know look in the mirror and you'll uh, time to make that change yeah right <laughs> you make that change because actually the way you think and the way you look at a situation can change the situation no matter what, right? We could be, uh, you could think someone's smiling or you could think somebody's frowning and so on. Give me a line from one of the songs that you wrote and then uh, tell us how to get involved hmm. tomorrow. Ooh. The change ran through my head, a song named Rise ran through my head and then Hands in the Sky. Um, question, we're all human, right? then we should all have basic human rights. And if I'm doing right, and if I'm doing well, then I probably shouldn't sit and watch my neighbor fail. We could all prevail. We could all succeed. But I got to be the change. I must be the lead. So I guess I lend a helping hand, show love to my neighbor, and help them stand. I love so there it. are a few lyrics on the song, Be the Change. I love it. I love it. I want it in my Peace Day show, September 21st, the International Day of Peace. I've been doing a concert in Times Square for many years and in Central Park. Uh, you know, when I saw what was happening here, I called the Beatrice and said, you know, I'd love to interview you. I don't think I can make it out there tomorrow, but uh, uh, I stay on a second after we finish and, and we'll exchange some numbers and see, see how we can do some nice things and share with the world. You're a good man, Saul Paul. I Thank like you it. so much for the opportunity to come share about myself and the important work that Wings Over Haiti are doing for the orphans in Haiti. Uh, and they sure the heck need your help big time and everybody else's help. It's not a country that's got their act together, unfortunately. And we can only pray that, uh, that the children survive because it's really very, and it's been a while. You would think that somehow with all the efforts and monies that have gone in there, that it would be in better shape, but somehow it's not. And, and that's, that is a sadness for many, no doubt about it. But I'm sure there are some pockets that are doing better and an orphanage like what you're doing down there, that's a beautiful thing. So keep up the good work. Thank you much. All right, thank you. Oh, let me ask you one last question. What's peace for you? Because we do this Peace Day show. What's peace for Saul Paul? Hmm. What is peace? That's such a broad question. Let me see, what is peace? Uh, maybe in the person of faith that I am, I know about peace that surpasses all understanding. That's a great thing. That's, uh, I guess, harmony within self. Like, yeah, it's great to be like um, in unison with yourself, when your mind, when your body, when your spirit are all aligned, that's peace. You're good, man. All right, thank you, Saul Paul. Thank you. Thank you much. Thank you.